help with that event, Levi would gladly take your help. Our children's Christmas program will take place on Sunday, December 19th for both services. Um, we're just asking that the kids come on Wednesdays and Sundays to practice between now and then. Our older kids will be presenting um, the program parts and the younger kids will be sharing special music. So we look forward to that. Then uh, again, we have our Christmas Eve services and this year your offering can go to four options. We have the Backpack Program, um, Central's Community Outreach, Zimbabwe, and the Guest Eye Clinic as options to give for that. There is a, a list of upcoming dates for the holiday season. Um, be sure to check those out. And I'd also like to invite you, if you would consider becoming a Kids Hope mentor, or if you have been a mentor in the past and would like to sign up again um, with COVID, we haven't been meeting with the kids in the school until this year, we can again. But um, we only have two kids in the program right now, so I'd really like to grow it back up into meeting the needs in our community. So I invite you to be a part of that ministry, and if you have further questions, please contact me. I also want to encourage you to please fill out your Connect card so we can stay connected with you, and you can place those in the offering can in the back. So with that, I invite you to just take a moment to center your hearts for worship. I invite you to please stand and join in our responsive call to worship. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I invite you to please remain standing for our opening hymn, Spirit of the Living God, found in the hymnal on page 393. Sorry, technical problems. Would you please join me in our unison opening prayer? Gracious God, we are troubled and confused in a confusing, troubled world. We try to make sense out of it in the midst of conflicting voices. So much in this world just seems uncertain 
and we are growing weary. Come near us as we worship you this morning. Touch our hearts and souls. Surround us with your strength. Remind us that no matter what this world throws at us, you are there. Remind us that real strength is found in you. Remind us that real hope is found in baby Jesus. In baby Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time I invite the Pauli family to come up to light our Advent candle.
did. Chapter lesson this morning is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This ends the reading of God's holy word. I'd like to invite the children to come up for a few minutes. That was close. That was really close. He's like three feet away. Well, good morning. How are you guys doing this morning? Good. Are you tired? Anybody tired? No. Yeah. You're tired? We got one that's tired? Do you ever get tired? You do, don't you, right? Sometimes you get so tired you can hardly stay awake, right? Have you ever fallen asleep? That happened to you last night? Have you ever fallen asleep like in a chair or something? Just sitting there, falling asleep in the car, maybe, because you're just so poop tired, exhausted, right? Right. Now, what helps us when we're tired like that? Like blankets, huh. blankets, pillows, candy. Huh. candy? Keep, awake. Keep you awake. That's good. I like that answer. Uh, but what helps you to feel good again? To feel refreshed? Huh? water. How about, uh, let me suggest that sleep would help us, wouldn't it? Because once we sleep, when we wake up, we feel better, don't we? So when we get tired, physically tired, we lay down, we go to sleep. Sometimes we fall asleep watching a movie, whatever it is, but when we wake up, we usually feel better. Now here, let me tell you something. Sometimes as Christians, we can get tired too. And we, as Christians, it's not easy to be a Christian because sometimes people around us, even our friends, aren't Christians and they do things that look like fun, like things we'd want to do, um, but we know as Christians we shouldn't be doing. And, you know, having to say no all the time to those kinds of things, that can be exhausting and make us tired too, 
right, as Christians. So then where do we get refreshed as Christians then? How about the Bible, right? If we read the Bible, when we come to church, when we're in Sunday school, it's kind of like taking a nap, right? We get refreshed, so we have strength to, to go into the world and, and be who we are as Christians and not worry about all the other things. And praying's a great one. Yep, that's an excellent one. Yep, any of those kinds of things can help us. And that's what I want you to remember, okay? Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, Lord, I thank you for all these young men and women up here. And I ask your blessing on each one of them. And help us all to, uh, to rely on you for our strength. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, ladies first. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Okay. He tried, right? He, he, can he have one for effort? Okay, there you go, buddy. You're welcome. How many of you... Um, have been feeling maybe a little burnt out or exhausted from the media. Anybody in this room? Anybody? Oh, come on, there's gotta be at least one, <laughs> right? Right? Uh, we, can, we can get burnt out from, from the news, um, and we're really not alone. I think most of us here, probably most of America, maybe even most of the world, um, can get, get fed up with the news at times. And in recent times, it seems like it's uh, gotten more and more negative, hasn't it? And then there was light. But doesn't it seem like it's continually gotten more and more, more negative, um, and it continues to progress in that direction, especially once we jumped into the whole COVID-19 uh, pandemic, that just added a lot of fuel uh, to, to that, that fire. And then we add uh, political tensions, we add things like uh, protests and, and unrest over social issues, throw in maybe some economic con concerns, inflation, um, Supply issues, uh, when I say supply, the supply chain uh, issues. It's really no wonder why we're feeling a kind of negative information overload. When you just stop and just take a half a second to think about it, it's pretty obvious. And then a lot of us, I'm guessing most of you at some point have probably had to quarantine. And a lot of people, studies have showed, uh, who are uh, quarantining, what they end up doing is they end up watching more news than they're watching before, and uh, hasn't helped the situation much for them. And we're bombarded by news everywhere, all the time, right? Some of us here are old enough to remember when news consisted of basically uh, three TV channels, uh, daily newspaper, and the radio, right? Remember those days? That's where, that was your news. That's where you got your news. When Walter Cronkite told us that's the way it is at the end of every news broadcast, we actually had some time to stop and breathe and think about what was said on the news. We now live in a world where we have this 24-hour multi-platform social media dominated constant cycle of news. We don't have much time to, to process it all. And it just seems to pile with more information that's, that's possibly and likely controversial. We hear a lot of conflicting information and it leaves us uh, confused, stressed and not being able to really do much about it. We can hear about it, but we really don't have much control over it. There's a gentleman by the name of uh, Neil Postman, and he wrote a book back in 1985, and it's called Amusing Ourselves to Death. Amusing Ourselves to Death. In his book, he called uh, news fatigue the loop of impotence. The loop of impotence. He also says that 
The news elicits, elicits from you a variety of opinions about which you can do nothing about. Neil Postman was writing before the internet, before smartphones, and he is already pointing to the problem of, of this news fatigue. That news fatigue that, that can leave us feeling depressed and powerless, maybe even distrustful of news sources. Those news sources that can leave us, that seem maybe even somewhat superficial at times, sensationalism oftentimes we see in, in news. Sometimes we see inaccuracies, we see a lot of bias in news. And the end result is that the, the more news we consume, the more anxiety and fear we experience. And what comes with that is this horrible sense and feeling of hopelessness. Now one solution, and I've, I've heard this mentioned a number of times, I've even said it a couple of times myself, is to simply turn off the news. But what I've discovered is even by me turning off the news, I'm still hearing news, why? because I work with people who watch the news, right? I have friends who watch the news. And what comes up in conversation? The news. So even if I try and avoid it, I'm still, I'm still getting it. Another solution might be to only focus in on the good news. Some of you are smiling out there when I said that. There is good news out there, but we have to sift through all of the negative news in order to find the good news. I'm just gonna watch the good news. I'm just gonna pay attention to the good news. Here's another solution. A good solution, I think. What if what if we were to put the news in context with an eternal perspective? What if we were to put the news in context with an eternal perspective? We might even add, what if we were to put all of our stresses, worries, concerns into an eternal perspective? What I mean by that is rather than agonizing and worrying about the news, the prophet Isaiah actually reminds us that the only news that really matters is that God, who created the entire world and everything in it, is still at work and he will ultimately set everything right. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is one of the things we hear from Isaiah who wrote to a people who were exiled. People isolated and distance, distant, distanced from, from Israel. And it was based on circumstances that they had no control or, or choice over. In Isaiah 40, 1 through 11, God announces through Isaiah that a return from this exile is on the way. A new exodus where, where God's people would be set free and restored. God himself would, would dwell with them and would, would feed them and he'd protect them as a shepherd feeds and protects his flock. This is the news God's people needed to hear. And it's the news that puts all other news into perspective. Jesus Christ came into the world as an infant he died on a cross, and he's going to return. We can worry over news that threatens to overwhelm us. But God reminds us that he is the creator who has measured the waters in his hand. He has measured all the waters on this planet in his hand. The news may focus on the tension between nations and rulers. God reminds his people that to him, the nations, the rulers, are like a drop from a bucket and accounted as a dust on the scales. 
They are as nothing before him. They are accounted as less than nothing and emptiness. That's what verse 17 says. And while the news is constantly concerned about material things, material wealth, material even safety, God reminds his people to be careful what they worship and to be mindful of the things they worry about because these things can become idols to us. And those things cannot compare to the glory of God who created all things. God puts all the negative and biased news into perspective. He takes this long, big picture view and the news and the stress and the anxieties we experience in this life are as nothing to God who sees them like withered plants that are here today and gone tomorrow because we have this eternal hope through Jesus Christ, this little baby who comes into the world to redeem us of our sins. Isaiah tells us, have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God who created the ends of the earth will not allow anything to defeat his purposes for a good creation. No matter how bad it may seem to be, God's purposes will always win out. So rather than worrying, getting fixated, or, or avoiding the news, instead of waiting on news by constantly refreshing our screens or, or scrolling through a social media uh, feed, Isaiah invites us to wait for the Lord. To wait for the Lord. Now when we hear the word wait, we think probably just sit and wait, right? Right? But waiting doesn't mean to simply sit idly and do nothing. To wait means to look to God to provide us with perspective, hope, to give us purpose through prayer and through being immersed in God's word. That's what waiting is for the Lord. Just imagine how much our worry and fear, our anxiety, could be mitigated if we just committed to spending at least as much time in prayer as we do scrolling through the news and our social media. Imagine how much worry and fear and anxiety we could overcome. Spending an equivalent amount of time, or, or more perhaps, listening to God and, and bringing our fatigue and our worries to Him would allow us the opportunity to put those things really into an eternal perspective while renewing our strength to deal with the things we can actually do something about. So let me suggest that you, you try beginning the day with scripture and prayer before you even touch your phone, before you touch the remote to the TV. Spend some time with scripture and prayer. Allow God's word to nourish you and strengthen you for that particular day and, the, then, the, and then you start over the next day. That'll help us to prepare to run the race of the day is going to give to us without growing weary, without being discouraged. It can help us to walk without fainting under a load of the worries and fears of the day. In other words, put your worries and fears to, to this eternal context, right? By starting your day with the good news. Because that's where our hope comes from in this world. Amen? Amen. All right, let's bow our heads in prayer.
God, we thank you that you are a sovereign God, that you know all things, that you're the creator of all things. Help us to, to seek you out more and more, especially through this Advent season, as we work our way to the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to put the news, to put our worries and stresses, our anxieties, our fears into an eternal perspective. Because we know when we do that, we see hope. We see hope in this life, and we see hope for our eternal lives. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and join in singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, 211, and up on the screen. Please be seated. How many of you love Christmas music? I love Christmas music. All right. At this time, we'll be uh, celebrating Holy Communion. If you did not get one of these packets, would you just please raise your hand, and the ushers will come down and make sure you, you get a packet. Just keep your hand up until the usher comes.
Igen, oké. Okay. If you're gluten, uh, gluten intolerant, these are um, gluten free, so they're, they're okay. Um, it's also juice and not wine in there. Also, um, everybody is invited to participate in the Lord's Supper in the Methodist Church. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a member here or if you're Lutheran or whatever you may be, you're welcome to participate in the Lord's Supper with us this morning. With that being said, would you join with me? We'll read this responsibly. It's up on the screen for you. The Lord be with you. And also you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. By your incarnation, life, suffering, and execution, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery, and made a new covenant with us by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. And when the supper is over, he took the cup again, he gave thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. Lord, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, and we do it as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So if you'd peel that top layer off and take the wafer out, The body of Christ broken for you. And I'll peel that second layer. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let's stand and join in singing our closing hymn, One Bread, One Body, 620 in the hymnal and up on the screen.
knowing that you are blessed. Go knowing that you have eternal hope. Go knowing that you are loved by the creator of the universe. God bless you and we'll see you next week.